guide us TV is to propagate the da'wah of Islam to uh, non-Arabic speakers, mm -hmm. Muslims who are living in the West yeah. and they are in desperate need for Islamic education, proper Islamic education. Absolutely. Uh, from an authentic source. And the second is to preach Islam to non-Muslims. You know, Sheikh Yusuf, we have many people who have called in live and accepted Islam by watching some of our programs. And it is really amazing, even some of those programs are 100% presented and directed towards Muslims, answering their questions or, you know, teaching them how to practice Islam properly. And we were shocked to know that there are many non-Muslims who are watching closely and following these programs. So this is a blessing, but unfortunately, uh, we're short-handed. We cannot do much about it. What do you have to say about uh, the role of the Muslim Ummah in respect of supporting the deen and propagating the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let me rephrase it. The non-Muslims' rights on Muslims, mm -hmm. particularly the greatest right of knowing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't they have a, a, a great right upon us, our non-Muslim neighbors in the States, in Texas or in Virginia or anywhere, in London, in anywhere in Europe, in Egypt. Don't they have a great right upon us to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we have to do in order to fulfill this right? And what is the role of the Islamic media which would waive this right by going to into body's house, enter their houses to deliver the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Jazakallah khair. I appreciate the caller with these good questions. So, um, first of all, I was sitting here listening to the question and also your explanation of what we need and remembering 20 years ago when I came to Islam, it was so dry. It was like a desert out there trying to find information about Islam at all. Mm -hmm. Now I was thinking today, look how many different ways that we can actually find about Islam. You have the internet, which is loaded with all kinds of information, albeit not so good sometimes. We have easy to get emails, be in touch with people, text messages, phone calls are much easier today, Skype, as you know. And also the contact with so many Muslims is more prevalent throughout the Western world. And especially TV, Huda TV, Peace TV, and now Guide Us TV. This is absolutely an obligation on all of us to get it out there and do it. There's no doubt about that. You know, Sheikh Yusuf, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Do you know mm -hmm. that the Fakhi committees have uh, issued a fatwa that... Um, it is permissible to support the da'wah cause, especially to non-Muslims, especially to Muslims who are living in the West from the Zakah Fund, as uh, one of the means of fi sabilillah, one of the eight categories, as mentioned in verse number 60 of Surah At-Tawbah, wa fi sabilillah. Fi sabilillah is not just limited to on a battlefield, but any mean of uh, delivering the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, by notifying people about it, whether the internet, as you say, or publishing books, or prison da'wah, or you da'wah at the university. At I the spent campus. a lot of years doing both of those. Yeah. Alhamdulillah wa shukrullah. I would like to uh, uh, visit one topic you mentioned about people calling in and doing shahada. Mm -hmm. You know we opened up Guide Us TV officially on January 1st of this year. Mm -hmm. So we're only like, what, four months old? Correct. We're babies. Yeah. But even in the very first days when we opened up the phone line and said people could call in, they flooded our phone uh, lines, a uh, line, we only have one cell phone I'm carrying. Yeah. But can you imagine, we couldn't figure out how all these people are watching hmm. so fast and so many non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. And we had already people accepting Islam. Alhamdulillah, shukran. So this is, uh, when you were talking, I was thinking, this is the area where we're the weakest. We talk about a lot of things in general about mm. what is Islam, mm. mother's rights, children's rights, parents' rights. We even mention enemies' rights, but we don't talk about the rights that non-Muslims have for us just as being good human beings to them. Yeah. And how about the best thing you can do, as you said? Well, they need to know who's the law. I do remember a few years back, post-September the 11th, when uh, an FBI uh, specialist and expertise came on Fox News and he was drawing a picture of who could be a sleeper. What's a sleeper? A sleeper is, you know more than I do. Uh, you mean they, like somebody that's yes. there amongst the community acting like just a normal exactly, guy, all of a planning. sudden he turns out to be like a, exactly. a terrorist. And, and it was shocking to me to hear that the, the, these guys were 
actually describing every ordinary Muslim to be a sleeper. He may be a doctor or an engineer, a professional, and he's very nice to his neighbors. He's quiet, does not make noise. His kids are disciplined. They go to the best schools. They're very quiet. Things of this nature. Perhaps he's never got a, a traffic ticket in his life. So I thought this Wait, is really... The guy that's a safe one is the one that's in prison. He's killed some people. <laughs> he does this and that and so on. So this is a good Muslim to him. What <laughs> doesn't make any sense. So he was saying, this is what they were talking about. After that, we started having some people, professional people, mm -hmm. uh, lawyers, uh, uh, law officials. They came to visit us yeah. in order to learn about us. We normally, every once in a while, we throw a party or an open house in order to educate people about Islam. But this time, they came without an invitation. One lawyer came, and he was a very famous lawyer in town. And Muslim maybe or non-Muslim? Non -Muslim. He's not Muslim, and he came. Okay. Yes, and uh, uh, we had a potluck. Then afterward, I had a lecture. Potluck. So he, yeah, potluck. And Hot food. <laughs> so he joined <laughs> us <laughs> both on dinner and attended the lecture. And afterward, uh, he pointed the blame gun to us. And he said... Why don't you go out to everybody and tell people who you are? You guys, oh. you guys are good people. You need to tell people that the, uh, this channel is lying about you and this person is lying about you. You have to confront the whole world about your reality. And I was wearing a thawb. He said, you know what? I'm ready and I'm willing to put on your thawb right now on because I believe you guys are very good and I would like to be one of you in a minute. And that was a single meeting in North Carolina, and I believe you visited the same place. I walked into one uh, uh, center, and I found a guy who was teaching the Quran. He told me his story. This guy, who's a Quranic teacher, uh, was a former uh, military man, or he was still in the army. And uh, he said, right after what he heard about Muslims, the negative... Uh, so he was not a Muslim while he was in the army? Uh, when he was a Muslim, after uh, he became a Muslim, he was still in the army. Okay. But what I'm saying is that was his career. When he was informed about that, he decided to look for any Islamic center in the Yellow Pages. He called one and he visited them. And his wife was so scared that they, he would be kidnapped or he would be killed or whatever. And when he entered the masjid and he saw how Muslims are so disciplined and organized after the Iqamah is called, and they make the same move. What really impressed them most, because he's a military man, the way Muslims pray. In the second visit, he accepted Islam. And he dedicated himself to learn the Quran. Then he became a Quranic teacher in the center. Nowadays, they're building a huge uh, center. And he's the imam of, uh, of this center. He became the imam? Correct. Because after a few years of studying mm -hmm. Islam, Quran, in Arabic, in Ahkam, when I saw him sitting and teaching uh, the Muslim youngsters, our children, and this guy was teaching them the Quran, I was very, very impressed. Uh, I'm trying to make a point, which is that these guys, once they know about the deen, number one, we establish the proof. Now you know. You have no excuse. Number two, I believe what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said is the ultimate truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his deen prevail mm -hmm. over all other religions. Mm -hmm. No matter how much opposition it faces, if all the media on earth uh, constantly stereotyping and bashing Islam and Muslims, still the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prevail. But the problem, Sheikh Yusuf, is that the ummah is not really doing much in order to fulfill this prophecy. Don't you agree? I not only do I agree 100% with you, mm -hmm. I have to tell you that I think of the Muslims as sleeping. So if he said we're sleepers, he's right. We're sound asleep. I mean, we're, oh, we're dreaming. almost in a coma in the West as far as that goes. But as far as being a danger to anybody, we're only a danger to ourselves. Because when we don't carry this message, then we have not fulfilled a part of our purpose. Correct. And when we don't fulfill our purpose, Allah, He didn't need us to start with. How much more are we down in the sight of Allah when we don't carry this message to the people, when we've been ordered to in Quran and by the Sunnah of the Rasul, it's a simple message. How come we're not showing it? And I don't mean just to say it, stand on a street corner, pass out some documents and run away. Mm. I'm talking about live the life of the Muslim. Let the people see, who's this nice neighbor? You know, in every place that I've lived, I've made sure since I've been Muslim to go around and meet my neighbors. And at first, that was hard for me to do because in America, we don't do that, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, in one place I lived, I knew every single neighbor all the way around me, and they knew us by the cookie lady, 
Well, yeah, because my wife used to make cookies and we would take them to the masjid on Friday and this was how we lived, really, selling cookies. And do you know, the people called me Mr. Cookie Lady. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but they knew me by those beautiful cookies that she made. So, so Sister Khadija is doing dawah from home? From, from okay. the oven. Uh